Hello and welcome to uh, a new video on the Roland Gaia. We're going to be doing a tutorial today and we are going to be building a fairly complex sound. We're going to do it one step at a time and you'll be able to see uh, how we're building up this sound and using all the different features of this synth to build this sound. Uh, I've seen on YouTube there are, there are a, a few tutorials, but none of them get really very deep. So we're going to get a little deeper today and build a really big sound. We're going to be building a kind of a synth orchestra sound that's, uh, that's very big and very fun to play. It's going to be a very playable sound too. So I'm going to put my headphones on and I'm going to get started. I'm going to I'm going to first play the sound that we're going to create and then I'm going to erase it and we're going to start from scratch. Okay, so first of all, before I erase this sound, I need to return all, this, all these settings back to a neutral setting so it's easier to start. So here is our neutral settings. In the D-beam, I'm turning the D-beam off. I'm turning my rate on the LFO back down to minimum. These sliders, three sliders go back to zero, this one goes to the fade time goes to the bottom. These go to the bottom. Pitch and detune go to center. All these go to the bottom and the envelope depth is centered in its notch. In the filter, I'm going to be using the low pass filter. So that means the cutoff goes all the way to the right, resonance all the way to the left, and key follow goes to center. All these sliders go down to neutral and envelope depth goes to zero. Amplitude, I'm turning it all the way up, bringing all three sliders down and the sustain slider all the way up. Effects, control one and level, turning all the way off. Set the, set the output volume to a, a level that uh, is comfortable. I'm going to erase it by holding down the shift key and pressing right. And now... We are back to a very simple sine wave with nothing done to it. So here we are, starting from scratch. Long way from, from that sound you heard just a few minutes ago. So in the first part of this, since we are doing a synth string, I'm going to want to start with my ampli amplifier and I'm going to First, start with the attack. Attack is way too fast, so I'm going to bring it in to a nice soft attack. In the 
delay. Delay. As you can see, it isn't affected because it, it doesn't affect it until it reaches the sustain on here. So with the sustain to the zero, now you can see it come up and down. With the sustain at the maximum, you can't hear any difference on the on the on the uh, delay. So I'm going to bring the sustain up. So we got kind of a nice smooth fade off with with a very little tone left over after it's done. Now the next thing we got is the last part is the release. It's still way too fast for a nice. So here we go. So now that I got my amplitude where I want it. I'm going to go back to my oscillator and go, and uh, and I'm not going to pick this particular wave. I'm going to click on down to the super saw wave. And there's three variations within that wave. And I'm going to stick with this variation, the unlit variation. So I like this. So with just picking a wave and setting up our amplitude, we've already got, yeah, we're already on our way. Next I'm going to go to the filter I'm going to put a slight cutoff on the filter by turning it to the left. Which gives me a totally different... takes us away from that sharper string sound. and brings in more like French horn sections. But to make this more interesting, we're going to start using the ADSR controls in the filter. And we're going to start by pretty much matching what I have on the amplitude. So this is going to give me a delay before the filter kicks in and now we're going to hear here here it is before now we're going to bring a we're going to bring a little bit of that in so now the now the strings are getting some character by adding a little motion into the sound we had this plain sound before but now we're bringing in the the what I manually did on the cutoff, I'm automatically doing now with the ADSR envelopes. So you can hear the, the French horn start, but then it goes back into the original, fades back into the original sound. So at this point, I have pretty much got my basic first synthesizer set up. Now there's three synths inside this synthesizer. So we're dealing with just one synth now. And what makes this so fantastic is we got actually three separate synths to work with. And uh, that's pretty, pretty fun. Ever since Roland came out with their with our first synth with all these controls uh, back in the 80s. It was, I um, can't remember the name of it, but tried to buy it on YouTube, but it was too expensive. 
these old synths were selling for five hundred dollars. So now I got finally got one just like it, except three times more powerful because we have three synths. So now what I want to do is take this same synth and copy it to my second one. So I'm going to do a tone copy. I'm going to pick number one and copy to number two. So now when I turn just this synth on, or just this synth on, they are identical. So the first thing I'm going to do is give this more character. I'm going to take synth number one and I'm going to go to the oscillator and do a detune, just a slight detune. And I'm detuning down. Now I'm going to my second synth. I'm going to detune that up. Now when we put the two together, Now right now I'm noticing that the synth isn't as playable as it was. So what I'm going to do is select both of these. Now I'm in edit mode for both of the synths that we had. And I'm going to extend my envelopes just a little bit. And extend the release just a little bit. Now at this point, we can start doing a little ex little something extra on individual ones. So the first thing I'm going to do to really open this thing up is I'm going to do a panning. I'm going to take synth number one. I'm going to hold down the shift cancel key. I'm going to hold that down. Now the detune button becomes a pan button. I'm going to take the detune button and actually I'm going to I'm going to let you hear this by turning on key hold. So i got more hands to use. And then I'm going to take synth number two and I'm going to pan that one to the right. Now when we put the two together, you're going to have a much bigger sound in stereo. Still not happy with the playability. So I'm going to turn both the edits on for synth 1 and 2, and I'm going to bring up to delay and sustain just a little bit more. Much more playable at this speed. The speed at which the song you're playing will determine a lot of these settings, especially the, so the amplitude. The slower I play, or I'm going to change these settings to match the slow play or flash play. Now we're getting a pretty, really pretty tone with this, uh, with this panning I did. We're getting, getting a much prettier tone. Now what we're going to do is we have these synths here, but they're all kind of in the upper tone. So what I'm going to do is go down to my last synth, I'm going to select this wave here, which is the uh, now as you notice, none of these envelopes are making a difference. It might be pretty darn confusing for everybody that this is the last setting I made, but when I go to this new synth, 
it's been initialized and it sees nothing that I've already set up here. So I'm going to return everything to work on this last synth. I'm going to return everything back to neutral. And remember these remember these neutral settings because um, if you set it back to neutral, it make it makes everything everything makes sense now. So now I want to. I want to add a little more bass tone to these two super saw uh, since we've set up before. So we're going to basically do the same, pretty close to the same ADSR envelopes. cutoff to take any of the sharpness out of there. And since I want to keep it in the base, I'm going to use what's the, in the filter section there is a key follow button. And that is makes it makes left and right hands very playable. So what it's going to do is if I turn this to the right Going, going all the way to the right, what it does is give more of a higher uh, cutoff frequencies to the top and lower to the bottom. If I go the opposite way, it's a very subtle difference in this particular tone. Actually, if I change waves, you'll be able to hear it better. Should hear the there's a softness being rounded off at the high frequencies. Here it is all the way to the positive. Here it is all the way to the negative. It's a softer tone. So now when I go back to my rounded off wave. Got more bass in the bottom, and it and it keeps the top really soft. I'm not going to do any detuning on this because all I want is to add that little bit of sub bass to it. Now let's hear what our full sounds like. Let's turn off the, that extra bass we put in there. Now add it. Well, these are very subtle changes, but there's a bass underlying. Now if you want this oscillator to come up, because this oscillator is very, very subtle compared to these two. So what you can do Go back to your amplitude and turn these two synths down a little bit, which will give more volume to this final subtle synth. Now it's sounding pretty good. But we got a lot more to go here. We're going to make this even more complex. So right now let's review. We started off with our first synth, our first tone. It's calling tones, but it's actually like having three of these synthesizers working together. So when we built our first tone, we set up our envelope and we set up our filters. 
and then we copied it to the second one. We detuned lower on the first one, detuned to a little higher frequency on the second one, and took them out of tune, which gave them a, a more harmonic wave. And then we finally added this third tone, which was the, which was the bass tone. Now what I'm going to do is go back to these two synths here. I'm going to turn our bass off. I'm going to, I'm going to take some of the high frequency sharpness out of this. But I only want to do it... I want to, the, base, the base end of, this, of these two synths have little too much grid in there for me. So again, we're going to go back to this key follow. setting on the key follow. So, there's a lot of synth sound to that. But as I turn the key, now there's a major difference there. I hope you can hear this. There's, a, there's all that synth dirtiness to it. But by using the key follow and turning that up into the higher levels, taking it away from the... It does this across the keyboard. It takes it, that dirt away from the bottom and sends it to the top. So, we, so I'm going to take this one and change it to this. So now the bottom is much more subtle. But I still got, in the melody right hand, in the melody right hand, I've still got a nice synth. So that's done with the key follow. The key follow makes the synth much, makes these tones much more playable sometimes, depending on the sound you're building. So now, let's add them all together and see what it sounds like. So not, not too bad, not too bad. Now we're going to do some even more subtle changes using the low frequency oscillator or the LFO. We're going to add just a little bit of movement to these synths. Now I don't want to add movement to the bass, so I'm, not leaving, I'm going to leave that one out. And I'm going to add just a slightly different amount of movement to each one of these, our two super saw synths. You got that right one? got that left one. So we're going to take our first tone one. And now we're going to use the LFO, which is going to uh, add a vibrating type rate to it. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use the filter on this one as my vibration. You can see it. Can... You can get pretty crazy. We're doing very subtle changes, so my rate is very, very slow, and this adjustment here is very low. And Uh, 
I don't want it to happen right away. So the fade time is just like this amplitude too. It gives you a little bit of... It's going to take a while for it to come into effect. Here it is coming in immediately. And here it is delayed. So you can see the little light here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can see the rate light just slowly creeping around. Now I'm going to switch to this second synth and just put a slightly different rate and time on it. Just so when these two synths work together they're going to have much more animation, much more movement. That's what's called animating the sound because it's moving on its own. I'm not even touching anything. I'm doing this all on its own. We're going to put them all together. Now what do we sound like? So we're getting pretty we're getting a pretty big sound here. So now we've pretty much used up everything there. We haven't gone into this sink and ring, but um, we won't be going into that today. But uh, I'm going to add a D-beam to it to control the effect to give us a little oh sorry we haven't uh, we haven't done the effects yet so this doesn't work yet so now we're going to move to the effects section and the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a pitch shifter. Now, this is a little trick. If, if you don't shift the pitch at all, that means you're going to use your control 1 and center it, and then go to maximum level, what this does is actually give you a doubling effect. And we go from this sound to this sound. Again, it's another subtle addition. But it really opens it up. It really opens it up. Now to make everything thicker, I'm going to go to we're going to add a little bit of delay. And then finally, to give it a more live effect, we're going to add reverb.
So here we are coming to the end. We've used just about everything. Now I'm going to use the D-beam and turn it on. Now we can add the sustain pedal as a control, modulation as a control, and go to work. There you have it. All the subtleties going together to make a very interesting sound. And of course once the sound is uh, to your liking and you're, you're going to need to write it. So I can't write the button number two that uh, I've been working on. Write again and now Saved. Now once it's saved, once you've got it saved, anything, any adjustments you make now isn't going to hurt anything. So you've got your sound saved. Of course, if you really want to save it, you, you'll put the uh, USB stick in and do, a, do a, a backup save. But we can select the first two synthesizers. I'm not selecting this bass because it really... It is a very subtle background effect, and, and you're not going to hear much on this demo. So now I've selected my first two, and now, now you can just try different waves. quite a bit of difference by just by just switching waves. We, got, we went from that to that. And of course you can get as crazy as you want after that. But this is what we we're building today. So you can see just those subtle little changes when you're trying to build an instrument that sounds, uh, that sounds like it's a real instrument, not a synth produced instrument. It's, you know, it has some realistic playing ability to it, too. So there you have it. Uh, the other thing is, is what I do is I take my keyboard from the shelf where I play it and I bring it down to an area that's very easy to work on. Because as you sit here for hours at a time, you should set up it in a, in a desktop type environment so it's very easy to work on. And uh, all I did is use a computer table and put a little metal strip in here and some C-clamps and I got a very solid 
very solid workspace to work with. And it's much more enjoyable to program synthesizers when you're not hanging over the top of them all the time. Just a little trick there. So, well, thank you for watching.